Hi all, welcome to RAW Online Teaching Program. I am Dr. Monica, your Pediatric Faculty. So today's uh, class is going to be about the standard treatment guidelines given by the Indian Academy of Pediatrics on Respiratory Distress Syndrome in Newborn, which is uh, commonly called as RDS. RDS or the Hyaline Membrane Disease. Uh, basically, this uh, Respiratory Distress Syndrome what happens is uh, there is a atelectasis of the alveoli because of the insufficient pulmonary surfactant production. So this is the underlying pathology in the respiratory distress syndrome. So basically the antenatal corticosteroids when given to the pregnant woman in the anticipation of the preterm birth significantly decreases the incidence and the severity of the respiratory distress syndrome. So let us move on to the topic per se. So who are all more prone to uh, develop this respiratory distress syndrome. So, th what are the babies? Who are all the babies uh, who are at the risk? So, if you see maternal diabetes or multiple births, when the uh, baby is delivered through cesarean section, or in case of uh, preterm premature rupture resulting in precipitous delivery, or in case of birth asphyxia, cold stress. So, these are all uh, the environment which increases the risk of RDS. Okay. These are all the factors that increases the incidence of respiratory distress syndrome. Whereas, at the same time, uh, this is one like a para, uh, paradigm that is, these are the factors which decreases the respiratory distress syndrome incidence in newborns. So, in general, we are more prone to read the factors which precipitate the cause. But at the same time, these are all certain conditions which decreases the risk of Incidence of respiratory distress syndrome. So, first one if you see any chronic or pregnancy associated hypertension that is PIH known to decrease the incidence of respiratory distress in newborn. Also maternal heroin use, prolonged rupture of membranes and as I already said antenatal corticosteroid prophylaxis. So, this we know this decreases the RDS incidence but these above three things we tend to forget or we tend to put it in the this column like increasing the incidence. So, you have to remember these three particularly like chronic or pregnancy associated hypertension, maternal heroin use and prolonged rupture of membranes. This they have given in the Nelson. Okay. So, before moving on to the disease per se, uh, just a few words about what is a surfactant, how it is being synthesized in the uh, in our body and uh, what is the constituent or the composition of the surfactant. So, if you see surfactant is basically present in high concentration in the fetal lung. Usually it starts appearing in the fetal lung by 20 weeks of gestation. So, from 20 weeks of gestational age itself, this uh, our fetal lung uh, contains the surfactant, but it takes little longer time. So, till term it will be it will not reach the only till term, uh, till term only it reaches the surface of the lungs. Before that though it is present, though it is present in the fetal lung, it uh, only at the time of term only it reaches the surface of the lung. That is why preterm deliveries are more prone for this RDS compared to the term deliveries. Okay. And, uh, if you see it is it is seen in the amniotic fluid by approximately between 28 to 32 weeks of gestation. Between 28 to 32 weeks approximately you can detect this surfactants in the amniotic fluid but mature levels only after 35 weeks. Mature level of the pulmonary surfactant that too in the surface of the lungs will be seen only after 35 weeks. So, coming to the synthesis of surfactant usually the, uh, for the surfactant to synthesize should have a normal pH that is normal acidic environment, temperature and perfusion. So, in case any factors that reduces like uh, reduces the pH like metabolic acidosis or in case of hypothermia, in case of hypoxemia. So, all these uh, in cells will decrease the surfactant production like asphyxia, hypoxemia, pulmonary ischemia particularly in association with hypovolemia or hypotension like cold stress environment, it suppresses the surfactant synthesis. So, normally for a surfactant to so synthesize properly, it should have a ideal normal pH, temperature and the perfusion. So, if you see the constituent of the surfactant, most commonly it is the saturated phosphatidylcholine also called as lecithin. 
So lecithin contributes almost 50% of the uh, surfactant composition. Uh, rest of them are phosphatidylcholine and other phosphatidylglycerols or phospholipids and the surfactant protein A, B, C and D. So this constitutes totally around 6%. So this is the composition of the surfactant. So coming to the pathogenesis. Pathogenesis as I already described basically surfactant is needed to maintain the alveolar stability. So alveolar stability at the end of expiration is must. So this is achieved by the surfactant. So the surfactant is needed for the alveolar stability. So what happens when there is decreased surfactant production? Decreased surfactant production or secretion, whatever it may be. That may result in because of any insult in the form of hypoxia or asphyxia or metabolic acidosis, whatever may be the underlying cause. If this insult occurs, then the surfactant production is reduced. So what happens once the surfactant production is reduced, it result in increased surface tension of the alveoli. Increased surface tension of alveoli. Thereby, what happens? The alveoli gets disturbed, it results in atelectasis. So, this atelectasis or the injury to the alveoli, uh, it causes hypoventilation. It causes hypoventilation. Hypoventilation means again hypoxia. There is no proper oxygen concentration, it results in hypoventilation. When this prolonged, this atelectasis continuously happens to occur, then the functional residual capacity of the lungs is decreased. So, this causes greater damage to the epithelial and endothelial cells, endothelial cells of the lung. So, it causes maximum injury. So, this injured cells produce more proteinaceous substances or cellular debris. So, this debris is effused into the alveolar spaces. So, that is why you can see it in the radiology, a ground glass appearance. This ground glass appearance is mostly because of the cellular debris and the proteinaceous uh, substance that has been effused into the alveolar spaces because of the epithelial endothelial injury which happens because of hypoxemia. So that is why it is also called as hyaline membrane disease because of that. So due to this again oxygenation is impaired. This oxygenation impairment again decreases the surfactant production, it forms a vicious cycle. So this is basically the pathogenesis that has been behind the formation of respiratory distress syndrome in the newborns.